Hello then, folks, and welcome back to the headline features of Football Manager 2023 reaction video from me of course we did two videos on the channel already where we talked about features i would like and you would like and football manager did a little teaser at what we're expecting from the game this year i assume they're going to go into more detail about those they've announced that at seven o'clock today so the trailer is on their channel i'll leave a link to the full thing in the description but if you want to watch my reactions to it and have my thoughts on it i'm a feature connoisseur so let's go through it and talk about each bit of course if you want to get yourself a football manager 23 this year you can do you can use my code as well fm23 benji at checkout over at fanatical you can get it cheaper than on steam it's 20 uh, 32 pounds and five pence there we are so if you want to get it cheaper help me out in the, in the process as well there's a link in the description go and get yourself a game but of course before you do that you might want to find out what's in it and so do i we are minutes away from the reveal they're going to put it on their youtube channel and i am going to react to it and we're off it's here here it is right then so the headline feature reveal it's 42 minutes i've just realized whoever uh, whoever's responsible for manager do not make 42 minute videos on features this isn't a good idea. This is not a good idea. Anyway, this is either this is a long reaction video or this is two reaction videos. Right there, gang. We'll delve in. Uh, are there any... I just want to check quickly if they've... They have. Okay, so there's an intro. I'm not that interested in the intro. I'm going to go recruitment revamp, match AI and animation. We'll definitely talk about that. And then uh, UEFA stuff, which we kind of know about already. Support of confidence and dynamic manager timeline. Right, so we're going to go straight in at recruitment revamp, folks. I I'll watch the other bit later on. I I is, is it Miles? I assume that bit's Miles. With respect to Miles, I'm here for features. New features. Cyrus right. joins me. Right. Cyrus is there with James Allcott. Here we go. Right now, uh, game designer, and uh, you've got some good stuff here to, to tell me about. Four key aspects, guys, that we're going to talk about here. Cyrus. Four. Let's kick off with the first one. We've got three key elements. Lovely lighting in that room, isn't it, folks? Don't you think, anyway. And then something that brings it all together right at the end. So stick around, guys. First up is the squad planner. Tell us about the squad planner. Okay, the planner. Yeah, so the squad planner, uh, as you would guess from the name, it's all about helping you plan your recruitment out for the season. No way. Moving on. So if we take a step back and think about, how, you know, why did we bring in the squad planner? We were trying to assess how, how a manager looks at recruitment. What are the key stages? Of what I'm interested in with this, and I know you want to watch it, is, is it going to be different to something I could do on a notepad? That's what I'm interested. Will it allow me to do things in game that with a notepad is, is a nightmare or doing like a Google sheet? That's what I'm most interested with this of that process for them so the way it'll work is we've got a brand new area oh. squad planner the game looks very similar first time i'm seeing it right looks very similar very purple and nothing new other than the squad planner on that left hand side that's my first note when you go to it what you're going to see is your whole team right? okay and so it's a whole section. based on your tactic every single position you're going to have all the players ranked in terms of how good they are and okay so it's similar to squad depth at this stage but of course you can maybe move things around a little bit in terms of choice and next season and the season after and that's where the planner aspect i imagine comes in and it's important to know this is kind of like a safe space right so it's like your secret book right your, your key striker is not going to get upset when you <laughs> put him fifth ranked because he'll never know right but your staff will know and they can then start making you know suggestions based on what your planner looks like okay. so you go in you can rank all your players you can see how they look you can start visualizing. Terrible news for Paul Allen. He's, he's, he's their best player. Where you're strong, maybe where you're weak. And as the planner suggests, start planning for that season. Uh, some of the really cool things is a bit like a, a dream team when you're planning. It's maybe not just a plan. Okay, so this is very similar to what we have with, uh, with the squad depth screen at the moment, which you may have seen. Players, maybe you've got long-term targets that you're thinking, how would my team look based around this oh. new midfielder? So anyone on your shortlist can be brought into See, your planner cool. at any time. So you add a player to your shortlist, you bring them into your planner, you can rank them, see how they compare to your, your current team. That's great. But also we do that with youth, right? So any youth player that you've got, you can bring in and see. And talking about youth, we don't only have a current season planner, we have a next season planner and a season after planner, right? So you can be thinking long term, how is my team going to look in two seasons time from now? Something we couldn't do before, so big fan. The idea is hopefully you've given you as much information as possible so you can really make a great assessment which can help you lead into that next phase which is planning out exactly what you're going to do with your resources i really love the way it looks when i yeah. saw it i was like ah oh, i get it it's all intertwined you know, under this umbrella of recruitment that's had a real shot in the arm 
this year with the game. Let's talk about scouting because that's the second. So that was part one, I imagine. The planner, part of the recruitment section. That's part one. Let's go to part two. My initial thoughts are not that, not that dissimilar to squad development, but again, I think it does look nice the way it's all integrated and the shortlist element of it, I think is really cool. That again, planning for the future, that's a nice way of doing it. And one um, that we really want to dive into and there's a whole raft of changes here. First one, recruitment focuses. It, there's been a, a real change on this one, isn't there? So the idea is now we've switched from assignments mm. to this concept of recruitment focuses. So they work in a very similar... Okay, so that was important what you said there. You said they've switched from assignments to recruitment focuses. So they've changed... So this looks... This is not that dissimilar to assignments, but again, it, they've sort of repackaged assignments then. Way, your, your chief scout, if you leave them... I like the UI of it. We'll I like the UI a lot. ...different focuses based on what they... What it looks best. like. At any time, you can come in and say... I want this focus set up and you can- Something about them clicking the stars there was very satisfying. Like, never see, that's never been possible before. That's exciting. Set a bunch of parameters. <laughs> I'm Position, reasonably pleased. Roll, PACA, height. Bunch of different things and they will then go off. Love that. That bit there where you could add and add anything you Start want and be very right particular. Because essentially that's you're wicked. saying- That's really this good. This is a, an ability to provide trusted delegation. And by God, it was really easy to do. That's what I liked about it. It was, it seems, that seems so simple, so intuitive. And so far, to, so uh, good. To your team, which is a big part of FM these days. It's not just you anymore because the game's moved on. So in terms of it affecting your inbox, which because sometimes there are, you know, I'm guilty of it myself at times, going da 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 yeah. There will be, there's going to be a strong effect Call on of duty, wasn't it? Yeah, well, the idea is to just reduce the noise <laughs> a little James. bit. Right, as you said, you get that, what we call sometimes called like space bar fever, right? Like, you know, 25... Space bar fever? Is that a medical condition? I've got that, I'll tell you now. I've got, I've got space bar fever. I've reports. You know, first two, three, maybe you pay attention to, but like most things, by the 23rd, uh, you know, I'm, I'm clicking through. You know so, me so well. Yeah, right? <laughs> so the idea is now that your inbox is, is something that we should be careful about what we put in there, right? So the idea is your staff Very done their due diligence. They've hit, they've hit the maximum they're gonna know on a player. And then they say, this is everything we've got on this guy. It's up to you now based on this information where you want to go. So percentages have gone? So percentages have gone completely, yeah. We, we no longer say this guy's at 88% player knowledge. And the main reason for that is we just wanted to be super clear about how far along in the internal scouting process you are. So previously you could scout a player. Okay, I'd argue they're being less clear by not giving you a percentage, but I get what he means. It's a lot more obvious, I think, is, is a better way of putting it. And he could get to 30%, and maybe you've spent two weeks on scouting that player. But then there might be another player that you've done no scouting on, on 65%. That might be because his reputation's super high or Interesting. they're playing in the same league as you, so you naturally know more about them. And we felt that sometimes that's a bit disconnecting, especially when you're sifting through reports. You're like, well, how much longer has I got left to go? Do we, should I just space bar and wait? You know, so what we wanted to make it sure is that we make it really clear how far along the process you are so that you know which information is actionable. So you get hit your inbox, you get told this is an extensive report, meaning we're not gonna be doing anything more on this. Now it's okay. up to you. Do you wanna make this decision or not? Essentially, the scouts now do four key stages of checks. I assume those players will then be left in your scouting center and then you can decide what to do the, with them once they're there. I'm someone that clears my scouting center a lot. So this, this sort of stuff applies to me quite nicely. And again, if you're getting full detail and full knowledge, that's you obviously a, a good focus, thing. Or your head scout sets up a focus and now your team will go grab a big bunch of players that potentially fit that. And at each hmm. of the four stages, they're going to find out a little bit more about these players and start whittling that list down. So by the end of it, you've got a, a more refined list of players that have all hit extensive reports that fit what you've been asking for or what your chief scout thinks you need. What it allows us to do is give you players that more fit what you're needing, but also it gives us this nice ability to say, at the last stage, we now have this concept of near misses. So when you go to your scouting center, um, we've revamped how that looks, right? So now you go there, okay. you have an overview page, the scouting center. which gives you a what have, we done, what have we done to my scouting center? Recommended players. We've even put like a sort of guided Show direction. It. Maybe you're not sure what you should be doing. Show it. Tips. Maybe you want to hire more scouts. Maybe you want, this focus might be finished. If it looks Maybe different, you show it. Different type. But when you go to the recruitment focus page specifically, you can select any of the focuses that are set up 
and you can when they're complete why didn't they show us it i want to see it oh here we go right scouting so they have redone it you've got your recruitment focuses on the left hand side everything else looks pretty similar but yeah so that's a big change potentially from whatever criteria you've set they've just missed out a bit too tall near matches a bit too old you know maybe interesting so that so so obviously he said it and i'll repeat it is that you get the players that suit perfectly to what you want and you get players that are suited near to what you want but aren't quite in the specifications so it's good also whoever's playing this save is using the in-game editor so don't trust anything but hit 80 percent pass completion rate and this guy hit 74 so okay, then we're only halfway through no one in that list. i'll just pause we're only halfway through the recruitment revamp here so there's a lot to be said about the recruitment revamp do we watch it at a slightly higher speed is that disrespectful does it does it impact things we'll, we'll carry on it's really doing it for you you can go to this extra place there we see, go okay you know maybe i thought i really wanted something but but this actually is now 42 you know, minute video so you're catering for you know the laissez-faire fm managers but also those guys who want that that control that you know no one's missing you know through the net you've got people with those near misses yeah um, exactly let's move on to part three of this which is agents now we're chatting with miles about how you know real life or real football is always being implemented into the game. You're always analysing the game itself to try and make FM as immersive as possible. And agents have become a stronger... And stronger is this going to become... Is this super agent-based? I'm curious. ...stronger part of it. And you've moved it on again. Their influence is, is being seen in, in, in this game this year, isn't it? I mean, agents can be a bit controversial. Like, love them or love them. They're a huge part, especially of top league. They're not going anywhere, are they? Yeah. They're not going anywhere at all. <laughs> and the reality is any... Any deal to do with a top player, I mean, any contract, transfer, that agent's the first point of contact. That's, that's who gets called first to see how it's going to go. Right. So what we've done is evolve that. So now when you go talk to an external player and you talk to their agent and you say, are you interested? They give you some ballpark ideas. We now added a next step where you can back back a little bit. So Okay, so there's more conversations to be going on now with agents then. So I'm glad to hear that you're keen on him. Uh, thanks for the feedback. And then you can test that. So before, it was pretty cut and dry. It was like, well, are you interested or are you not? There was no middle ground. They've created a middle ground, which was definitely needed. So I'm all in. So uh, yeah, that was, which was definitely needed. Say they, they, you really like a player and his agent's saying, this is the sort of wage they're looking at. And you just know for a fact you're never going to be able to afford that wage. You can now say, this looks great, but... We're just never going to come so to conversations it. and interactions with agents good to terms on this wage and then it depends you know on the agent and the player's interest so you get this little back and forth to see if you can come to sort of initial sort of i do think because i've got to say si and football manager this video is great as a 40 minute video you could have done you could have done a 10 minute version with, with like explaining that feature as a thing but it's, it's all great going to talk to an are. agent but if they just if there's something you know you're never going to that's be a really nice hit, feature it's nice but to just be able to say is there any compromise here like i like this video so again, but i, I could have done with both your own players if you want to renew a contract with one of your own players talk to their agent and just like external players they'll give you a feel oh he so you can outsource your own players agents that's good that's again the middle ground and the conversation that happens in between the like the, the, the conversation and the negotiation and then the like the agreement you now have a bit more in between that which i think people definitely wanted i definitely got that vibe from comments yeah, and suggestions and stuff this sort of package it, it's like getting the feelers out that's what we want to make sure that this is there's nothing like officially locked in here okay. this is just a light touch taking them out to dinner aren't you you're, yeah you know you're schmoozing a little bit i see exactly nice. get that in the game get that that's in the game. game i want to take my players out for dinner i want to pick the restaurant We'll move on. I can, tell, I can tell it in your eyes. Your eyes have changed a lot there. As you <laughs> I get what you're talking about. Let's get on to the fourth uh, feature here because okay. it kind of brings it all back together again and, and something you talk about the uh, implementation and impact of agents and how you started there and you've moved it forward. And I think that's the same with a lot of elements of the game. But recruitment meetings debuted in FM21. Um, how are you taking it forward uh, this year? Meetings are a tough one in general, right? Like, like real life, any meeting that doesn't have a designated purpose <laughs> or ends with actionable information, you, you know, you kind of feel like it was a waste of time. And the he's, avo he's avo avoiding the word boring for, I'll say it. He's avoiding the word boring. The more of those you have, the less likely you want to go to the next one. So we really tried to think, why how do you, you make spend them, your time? In this how do you make them less boring? How have you made them less boring? We realized that we have to adapt and these recruitment meetings need to be bespoke for the stage of the, the season you're in. So we, we broke it down into three. First thing we're going to do is show you the new planner. This is how it's set up. Do you, are you happy with it? Do you want to tinker with it? You know, just give you an again. introduction to this, this new part of the game that exists. Fine. And then the last part of that is, here's what your staff think you should be focusing on in terms of recruitment focuses. Here's the ones they're going to set up. Do you want to set up any additional ones yourself? So so like, he scheduled contract negotiations there for your inbox, I imagine, which is good. Now the very first recruitment you go into, three or four days into your job, we're hitting you with players you might want to sign. It's a lot to ask, you know, new to the job. So that's why, you know, you're no longer going to get that in your first recruitment meeting. When you finish the meeting, your staff are going to go execute, right? 
So in a few weeks after that, you're going to get another meeting, which is the review meeting. And that, as the name sounds, they're just going to explain to you, here's how we found based on the focuses. Here's potentially who you've signed. So if I'm a bit bored of the conversation about the meetings, if I'm honest, but we'll, focus we'll keep going. Really relevant. And also plays maybe you've been trying to sell. Here's three plays you've been trying to sell. Two of them We're speeding up, so chat. Viewers, listeners. Plan a little. And then the final one is transfer deadline day. So we, we obviously improved that a lot last year. And now you have right. essentially a very quick... So you're having a, a bigger meeting on deadline day for recruitment, which you, you didn't have that before. It was very much left no to you one. to sort of go mad on deadline day. You've sold no one, right? So deadline day, maybe when you get that news item now, you should probably click accept because we need to maximize. But on the flip side, I've hit everything I need to hit. You know okay. what? When that meet deadline day comes Of course, around, it's worth noting. Sit back and sit down. Like these are so decisions made. When it comes to recruitment. These are decisions made by your scouts and your coaches, and well, scouts mainly, like, and your recruitment team. It's not necessarily always the players you want, so you've still got the option to sort of free roam your way through it. Be it if you want a bit more chaos or you want a bit less chaos, either way, it's in your hands. Yeah, for sure. Just trying to give you as much as much control as you want, you know, to, to play it your way. Essentially, that's what football managers are about, right? Lovely. Your own story. So we just want to empower you as much as possible to be able to shape that story however you think. Okay, so we're going to get to match and AI, match AI and animation, which I'm really excited about. I think we'll do these two together as part one of this, and then we'll do part two for the other bits of the second half of the video. So this is going to be two videos. So leave a like as soon as this hits, let's say 2,000 likes, my reaction to part two will fly up as well. So we'll do that too. Um, but it's interesting, isn't it? Because they've worked on loads of quality of life things there. A football manager often do that. And that was a really good example of it. So yeah. It's, okay. it's not like blowing me away, but I can see the positives to the things they've just announced. Right, let's go back in and let's go match AI and animation. Which they didn't they tease very much, by the way. Nick Madden spoke very little about it in their little teaser trailer thing we talked about last time. Use all those recruitment tools. You got yourself a few wonder kids, a few experienced pros, and you got a Slow James down. Team Enjoy it. Together. You, you want to get onto that pitch and see how they perform. And so now we move on to one of the goats, of course, Nick Madden. Who's that? I'm obviously most excited about this. Let's be clear, this is the thing I care the most about. How Fort Manager looks and plays and animates. And... The promotion, by the way. Now, senior match engine producer, Nick Madden. And Love Nick Madden. lead match uh, QA analyst, CJ Ramson. To CJ talk there as well. about the match, the match engine and so much more. This is a juicy bit, guys. This is exciting. <laughs> you got a lot of love Juice for the me. game last year, which... Is nice, isn't it? Oh. Um, how do you feel about that? And and what can we expect this year? Yeah, it was like absolutely phenomenal. The reception last year to all of the. I love you, Nick. But YouTube watch year, times, mate. The amount of players that are playing FM22, we're incredibly proud. So Three million is the number. Goals, sort of Three million players. And, yeah, it's about us this year. Again, make sure you subscribe. It, it's <laughs> it's so difficult yet so rewarding to work on something that is never finished, and mm. because um, we're, we're iterating every year upon the match engine and yeah we want to take it to those extra levels so for fm23 we spent the majority of our cycle working on our ai managers so we like a football manager we look at every single manager across on the, the ai managers so that's not us that's them we never really talk about them okay world so we have a thousand scouts all across the world that are looking at the different data points of all the managers so we want to simulate those managers in the best way best way possible so we want them to have their tactical styles be reflected in the match engine and in the AI simulation. So the AI managers are essentially all of those managers across the world and how we represent them, how we represent their playing style and overall how they play within the simulation world. Now our AI managers, they can select the right formation, they can select the right tactical instructions to hopefully go into that tactical battle. I feel really bad when I say this, but you'd think that would already be there, wouldn't you? But anyway, they've obviously done more, which I think, again, is, the depth of the game is the, is the selling point of the game, so fair enough. With not just the human manager, but also the other AI managers. Wow. Because we're simulating thousands upon thousands and millions upon millions of matches, all in the background. So we want to make sure that that simulation world is both As believable, accurate, realistic, yeah. and when you're playing in a match, you feel like there's that tactical battle. I feel like I feel like that's that's been the case before, but sort of on like surface level. Like there's been really obvious examples, but lots of it has sort of been, well, it's a little bit random to be honest. So I get I get what they're saying. They're trying to scout managers more rather than just You're players. Tested, but also, you know, it should make the game harder as well. That's the thing to say too. Like you're going to be playing against a lot of different styles now. You would think that should make the game harder. The AI manager is is representing what we're getting from the data. In terms of that sophistication, that's where you come in when it comes to the testing, I would imagine. I love the CJ. lighting. How, how extensive is that? Tell me about your, your role here at FM. So the main part of my role within the team is to kind of lead the team 
in making sure that our testing and the final match engine is as close to real life as we can get. So we watch a lot of real football, um, obviously in our spare time, casually, but also at work during the meetings where we watch a full match of football. (laughs) I I won't just be looking at the scoreline or attacking defensive play. We'll really break it down. So how does this team press? We'll compare a low block to a high press. We'll compare different types of manager styles to really see is that reflected in game and does football manager look as close to real life as possible? Um, along with watching oh. football as well, we also watch a lot. Okay, so is this? I assume this is right. I'm gonna have to just comment on it. Other than the top, the, the top left, the scoreboard is slightly different. There's a, there's a whole host of them watching this as well. What a crowd! Uh, this is the first look I'm getting at a technical test of the match engine. Obviously, we don't know what it looks like and if it looks like this, but it looks. And I've just got a comment on what I see. Like it looks really similar to what we've had in previous years. Lot of the match engine, not just playing the game ourselves, but also as a team. We'll be watching matches. And my assumption is that this is 23 because the UI is different in the top that. left. That feeling of um, it being real is quite an elusive term for you to sort of try and get to grips with and then apply within to a game. So in terms of to, to try and get across that reality from one to, you know, a, a video game, how tough is that for you each year? How much, you know, how much are you watching? As we're all fans of football, we will know how random football can be. You never know. An underdog can be a big team or a big team can have 20 shots a game and... And you never want to lose that, do you? You never want to, but in real life, it happens. You can have the high XG, you can have the high expected score, but sometimes you just don't win. So trying to Hmm. reflect all these things, but also reflect how some of the top teams play with a variety of styles at the same time. I think sometimes, like, it's interesting they're they're putting that out in the video, right? And they're choosing to include it. Because I think sometimes that gets lost by us playing it. We forget that the match engine is a replication of real football. It's something that, again, I think we probably just, as players, we, we think of it as a um, game, it's right? To get the balance, but it's- so far, we're 20 minutes in. I've not seen a whole lot of screenshots and I've not seen a whole lot of gameplay and I want to see more. Something so let's see some more of someone, please. Year, we've managed to get looking really good. One of the main things we really wanted to do was improve the defensive side of the football. As much as everyone loves to go forward and press high and attack, we also Snaps want to be able there. to kind of sit in the low block and be able to soak pressure and counter attack as well. So you have the tools to be able to defend as well as attack. And one of the main things... That piece there... While visually, by the way, I've got to say it, I'm disappointed because it just looks like FM23, uh, FM22, sorry, as it is a again, work in progress. It says it down the bottom right. The one thing you would say, though, that looked incredibly fluid. Should we watch that again? I think we should watch that bit again because that looks a lot more to, fluid. Yeah, and also, really it's good. important that one I put that. Really I, just, I just want to put that at normal speed as well. So we're seeing this at normal speed rather than the sped up version. It did feel like that pass I've there was a little bit like it was cut across the ball. The we will... I just, I just mute CJ. Sorry, CJ. I just want to watch it again. It seemed really fluid. Like the way the balls played in, the finish seemed like, again, the fact that it was a, like a new animation for a first time finish. Anyway, how teams can soak up pressure and then attack on the transition and attack on the break. So you're kind of utilizing that example of that trend of the, the defensive nature of it. I know that's something that's changed with the, the game. Hmm. Also, I, I think I've certainly seen it, is that there has there is an evolution of language when we talk about football. Hmm. And I think FM are, are a huge part of that in terms of understanding how things work, analytics, which is a big part of last year's game. Um, so talk to me about that, because there, there are some changes in one, the wording, but also the, the defensive tactical instructions as well. Yeah, so this okay. year we've there we go. We've we've added in a lot of more instructions to the defensive side. So oh wow, a lot more instructions. Player base, as soon as they load up FM23, they go to the out of possession tactics. They're- okay, boom, stop there. So out of possession, you've now got hold defensive line or drop deeper, trap inside, trap outside as defensive. So. Defense, a, a, a pressing trap is where you're you're wanting a team to do a certain thing and then you react to that. And cross engagement, stop crosses, invite crosses. They're gonna see so a they've added a bit more the alongside the tackling, um, obviously. The first one is really trying to simplify the line of engagement and the terminology that's used because we feel that... Okay, so it's still about where... Okay, so it's interesting. They're still showing you sort of where you're trying to force teams to go, but they've, they've changed wording like the width and how wide you play and where you're making players go inside or outside and pressing trap has basically been... Again, Nick sort of said it there. They're recalculating how people think of that, which is it's curious. It's really hard to get across what a much higher line really is and what that represents. Um, so we, we thought, well... Why don't we simplify this, but also make it more football specific, make it more the language that you're hearing on television and by making it more intricate, managers they're making it more tactical. So we've gone for that low block, mid block and high press. So we've simplified that, but also it enables the, the end like user of the game to have more control. 
When it comes to the players themselves, then, mm. um, talk to me about that. We're talking about formation and those broad strokes. What about the players themselves? So, yeah, we've, we've made, honestly, numerous changes to FM23's match engine and our players' okay. decisions. So when people say it's not only match engine, that's the important statement. They've made numerous changes to the match engine. And I'll remind everyone again, the engine and the graphics engine, two different things. The graphics engine is what it looks like. The, the match engine, how it plays, like how it plays like real football. And that was something they talked about a minute ago. Um, I guess I'll start at the back. Show so us, Nick. Our goalkeepers now, they have the ability to do K blocks and spread spreads and spread blocks. So our goalkeepers will now look goalkeeper bigger, animations. more intimidating in those one-on-one -on -one no, situations. No, surely so not. It's about them feeling a lot more Go on. natural, playing like that goalkeeper. That it's a work in progress. I guess, I think you can just see it behind my head. As he so sort of comes forward here. Feeling a lot more. The keeper's like looking the wrong way. <laughs> but, More natural playing. Saves like, it with his legs though. Like naturally saves it with his legs. They're also Just looked a bit funny. much better with the ball at their feet. Um, and the setups. Do they look the like footballers kicks, now long, rather than Cal the Dragon? To make a lot of adjustments and a lot of No disrespect to Cal, his distribution was excellent um, in the I think game. the biggest improvement. Oh blimey, we'll lots going on how, here. How well defenders deal with the ball aerially um, and how they look to adjust the I've got, we should all watch that again because there was so much going on on the screen. There. Um, I think the so biggest... these are obviously the decisions that players think about or players in their eye line, I'm imagining, based on what they can see, right? You look at where all these arrows are and the players in front of them. I could be wrong, but that's what it looks like. Again, all the players in front of them are, are highlighted, all the players behind are not. Improvement so that we'll see is how, how that's well obviously affecting how decisions are made and when they're pressed and when they pass it. That's really interesting. Um, that defensive header looked a lot they look cleaner to too. Their body position to make that header, the trajectory of that defensive header as well. The main thing that I, I found um, like brilliant this year with our defensive play is not just the pressing, but also the sort of the back pressure. I feel like in previous FMs, like the, the, the midfielders or the attackers, they didn't really feel that pressure behind them as much. It feels now that with the, the press, the pressing angles that we've really improved and also the way that mm. players do tackle so they won't just go for that slide tackle hell for them okay let's see time. like they will look to try and can they intercept can they block can they poke that ball away um so it's a poor ball forward say what you see Ben. It, it, it's a lot more nuanced and yeah especially with that defensive stability they look to oh i can quickly nip in there oh i'll quickly <laughs> step in and get that interception and then we can break so no, if my defender does that, I'm, I'm smashing the keyboard. So yeah, it will feel a lot more realistic. Oh, it's a lovely finish. Lovely little bit of whip, a little bit of bend, a bit of curl. The nature of that like midfield zone, that's what we really tried to replicate this year is the chaos of football, not just the pretty... So pressing structure, it seems a big part of what they're doing as well, like defensive structures and attacking structures and it making more logical like steps in forward areas. Attacker, like it is about like, making the, the engine feel believable. As we spoke about the animation engine last year and I remember your face lighting up as <laughs> you had to tell me about it. What's happening this year with the, with the animation engine? Yeah, so talking about the animation engine last year, Talk to I was me about so excited it, because it was the foundations. Like, Doug is desperate to know what's going on. Desperate. The, the new engine was the foundations for us to go forward. And this year, we have overhauled all of our on-ball actions. So We've overhauled all of our on-ball actions. That's a lot of on-ball actions. Last year, we touched a bit on it with the dribbling first touches. We have overhauled the selection criteria for every single action that you have on the, in the game, okay. on the ball. So that it really looks at anything where it could be your the ball incoming speed, the ball outgoing speed, where the ball is coming Show me from, all these examples when you next. talk about them. Hopefully our fans will see the, the, the kicks now, any sort of pass. Finish. It does look a, a lot, lot I said more it, variety in there. I said about the, the clip before, right? It just looks a lot more fluid. It just looks a lot more, yeah, I guess real is what they're going for, right? It does look a lot like cleaner. More realistic to the, to the context of what's going on. You know, a player playing it with the outside of the foot versus the inside of the foot. There's been so much collaboration with our AI team and the animation team because, you know, the first time that I've, you know, as an FM player for so many years, seen a player chest and volley within the same action like bang, bang are they going to show a chest and volley so a lot more realistic oh well it's bounced yeah, but I'm sure so it's a half volley both what the animation team have been able to deliver and their collaboration with the ai changes and being welcoming of we're making these ai changes we need it to look good as well i guess the final question <laughs>
Okay, well, that's a really interesting statement, and I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat it. Animation team have been able to deliver, and their collaboration with the AI changes and being welcoming of we're making these AI changes. We need it to look good as well. So that, that, so when they say that, and again, it's a point I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to talk about it a lot, and I suspect I'll talk about it for, on full release as well, is that they're making it look good in terms of the animations look good, but I still think visually there are loads of holes. And I, and I think sooner rather than later is what I'm going to keep saying. That's the final question for, for me to ask you guys is with that all in place, what would you say to fans of FM? Can they be excited this year? It just feels a lot more real to me and I'm really excited about it. Okay. Our testing team are much harsher than even people in the public. So we have very high standards of ourselves. So Good. we want it to be the best yet for our fans. And there we are then. Let's end it there. Let's come back for the next two bits then. We've got UEFA as well as some other little bits and pieces as well. As soon as this video hits 2,000 likes, of course, we'll focus on that. And let me know what you think then in the comment section. Give me all your thoughts, whether it's positive or negative. They, I'm sure people at Football Manager will be reading them. They'll be curious as to what you think, as am I. And again, the second part of this, where we'll talk about some of the bits they obviously don't seem as important. YouTube retention, etc. So um, yeah, again, get the game early if you want as well. £32, 5 pence with Fanatical. Link in the description as well as loads of other stuff as well as the full video football manager put out as well. But there's my initial thoughts. I'm not blown away. That's how I feel about it. I'm not blown away. I think it's like, it, I'll play it and I'm excited to play it. I'm not blown away. I think I'm going to be focusing more this year on what's not there rather than what is there. And that's never a great thing. But I think the, the improvements they've made in terms of quality of life, right, and the animations, I'll obviously still enjoy the game and the game obviously always gets better. Is it doing that enough? It's a conversation for another time. Okay, take care. Until part two.